This morning in Health Watch, what to do if flames suddenly break out in your kitchen? Early show consumer correspondent Susan Copen here with some important safety tips. Good morning. Good morning, Harry. Cooking fires are the leading cause of home fires in the United States. So we are about to show you the do's and don'ts of handling a grease fire. In just minutes, an entire house can go up in flames. And most of those fires start right here, the kitchen. Cooking fires cause more than 480 fire deaths each year and nearly $900 million in property damage. Grease fires that get out of control are one of the main culprits. To see firsthand just how out of control they can get, we went to the State Farm Building Technology Research Lab outside of Chicago. Do most people know how to handle a kitchen fire? Uh, I would say not many people know how to, to handle a kitchen fire and what to do if it were to start. State Farm researcher John Donovan is an expert in grease fires. With firefighters standing by, he helped us set a pan on fire to show us what not to do in a kitchen fire. You might think water is the best defense, but not when it comes to a grease fire. Just watch what happens when John throws a small cup of water on the pan. The flames double in size almost instantly. We threw probably an ounce and a half of water on that fire, and you saw the flare-up we got from that. Absolutely the worst thing you can do to a grease fire is throw water of any sort on it, any amount, anything, no water. And here's what happens when John tries to smother the fire with a wet towel. Again, the fire becomes more intense. The other, other hazards are you may try and put the towel on there and actually pull the pan off of the stove. Well, then you've got burning oil on the floor most likely you've got it on whoever was trying to throw the towel on. So you're just, uh, you're causing more problems than you're, you're trying to solve. Even using a fire extinguisher that is water-based can have disastrous results. Just look, the flames shoot to the ceiling. What you need is a dry chemical fire extinguisher, specifically designed to deal with grease. You can see here how it puts out the flames in a matter of seconds. So basically you pull the pin, you squeeze the trigger and you're aiming at the base of the fire. You want to put that fire out at the base. If you put it up high, the chemical falls on top of the fire. It doesn't do a bit of good. Here's something else you can do. If the flames are small enough, carefully put a lid on the pan and turn off the heat. Don't try and move the pan. Uh, many people get burns or start fires elsewhere as they're trying to take that pan and get it outside. And once that lid is on, don't remove it. Watch what happens when John does just that. Even if you've turned that burner off, that pan is holding the heat, the oil is holding the heat, it's going to light again. If a grease fire is left alone, even for a few minutes, your whole kitchen can go up in flames. Watch what happens when we let this pan burn. Within 30 seconds, the flames reach the vent. At one minute, the cabinets are on fire. Two minutes, the stove and cabinets are fully engulfed and flames are reaching the ceiling. At three minutes, firefighters come in to knock the fire down. From the time that fire starts, how long do you have to realistically try to put it out on your own? Once the fire lights, you have 30 seconds to a minute of opportunity probably. You know, 30 seconds, you have a small flame probably about this high. But after a minute, you're starting to get flames up almost as high as the cabinet. At two minutes, we've started to uh, engulf the cabinet, so it's way beyond at that point. So, uh, realistically, if you can get it within the first 30 seconds, say you were standing in the room when it happened, uh, you could probably get a lid on it and put it out. And if you do have a fire in your home, in the kitchen, or anywhere in the home, make sure you call 911 before you really try to handle things on your own so it doesn't get out of control. But the thing is, with the lid, though, it was amazing. Put yeah. the lid on there, you go, look at the lid. <laughs> Keep that lid on there if you're going to put the lid on. All right, here are standard fire extinguishers. Okay, so something you should have in your home, in the kitchen, nearby, fire extinguisher. So if you're going to have something small like this, this is a traditional fire extinguisher. Look on the front, make sure it says ABC so you know it'll work on everything in your home. Uh, wood, paper, grease, electrical equipment. And this is, goes for $20, so it's not too bad okay. in price. This one is specifically made for the kitchen. It's smaller, it's white, you can put it in the corner. People probably won't notice that you even have a fire extinguisher sitting out. <laughs> Some people are worried about that. They don't want a big red one in their kitchen. Uh, this goes for $15, and this is good for grease, this is good for electrical equipment. Okay. Something else, which is made by First Alert, this is something called Tundra. It's actually a spray bottle. A lot of people are really intimidated by right. pulling the pin and trying oh, sure. to figure out how to use a fire extinguisher. $15, all you do is spray it. 
So yes for grease fires. Yes, you can okay. use this on on wood, grease fires, electrical equipment. You got it. Thank you. You Take may have home. one. Thank Lovely you. Lovely parting gifts. Susan Copen, thanks so much.